Hi everyone, I'm Shadaj, and today I'm here to share how I got started with programming, how any kid can get started with programming, and how learning to program reveals a whole world of possibilities. I got started with programming when I was six, and all I needed was tools, guidance, and encouragement. I'm going to be going through these three aspects of getting started with programming, and hopefully by the end, if you're a parent, you'll have some ideas on how to get your kids started with programming, and if you're a kid, you'll have some ideas on how you can get started with programming. There are a lot of tools for getting started with programming. I'm going to be sharing a few which are relevant today. Scratch is an excellent tool for young programmers. It all runs in a web browser, has a graphical language, as well as a graphical output. And built-in features such as a simple physics engine make it possible to spit out a game like Pong in a few minutes. When I was six, there was no Scratch, but I had LEGO Mindstorms. LEGO Mindstorms was great because it had a graphical language, but unlike Scratch, it had a robotic output. So here I have a scorpion Hello. robot. And you can see I'm so delighted to see this robot moving around doing what I programmed it to do. Lego Mindstorms was great because it was Legos both on the hardware and the software side. On the hardware side, it's simple. You're putting together your Lego bricks to build a robot. But even on the software side, you have your components that you're putting together into an interesting program. At some t a point, you need to move on to a text-based language, and Kojo is great for that. Kojo is a turtle environment in which you program turtles, then move around drawing things. And in Kojo, the language you use is Scala. One of the best things you can do as you're getting started with programming is combine tools you've used into interesting results. And that's what I did with LEGO Mindstorms in Scala. So I took, my, uh, I took my robot and I created a program using Scala that would control it over Bluetooth. So here my robot's dodging books. And these books are the books I learned programming with. There are a lot of websites for getting started with programming as well. There's Khan Academy and Code.org, both of which have excellent courses on getting started with programming. And if you're looking for something a little deeper, there's Coursera, Udacity, and edX. I learn many things, such as bioinformatics and other algorithms from courses on these websites. As a six-year-old, I had tools to get me started, but I also had questions from simple ones such as, how do I copy this file and how do I install Ruby, to deeper ones such as, how do you write a good program? What is a good program? And to answer those questions, I needed guidance. For me, guidance came in a simple feedback loop. I wrote my code and showed it to my parents, and my parents gave some sort of response. And I've put together a few quotes of the type of responses I would get. Try it with this input. This is what I would get if I'm solving a puzzle or algorithm. And I, it works on the sample inputs I throw at it, but my dad would say, try it with an empty list, and it would crash. And this taught me to watch out for edge cases. Too many vars. This is what I would get if, when I was getting started with programming in Scala. From other languages, I was used to a mutable land. But in Scala, since you have functional programming, you also have an immutable land. And so my programs would start out having many vars, but after getting, uh, getting this comment from my dad and also a hint on how I could do something like fold or map to get rid of those vars, I learned functional programming and cleaned up my code at the same time. I don't get it. This is what I would get if I throw together some complicated piece of code and my parents don't get it. And at first I thought, they're my parents. They don't get anything. But eventually, I realized that even I couldn't understand this code after a few weeks. And this taught me to keep my code understandable. And that comment would often come hand in hand with too much code. When I got started with programming, I would often just copy blocks of code throughout my program. And this would cause issues. First of all, the program would get pretty lengthy. And also, if I had a mistake in the code I copied, that, it, and then I had to, multiple places where I have to change. And every once in a while, I would just forget a place, and my program wouldn't work. And this taught me to keep my code short. 
So this is an example where I got all of those comments at once. Here I'm finding prime factors, and it's long, I don't get what it's doing, there are a bunch of vars, and it's not that great of a program. But after going through multiple iterations with my parents, I was able to bring it to this. So this is short, it uses functional programming, it's easier to understand, and that's how guidance helped me. Today I realized that knowing how to code has long-term benefits, such as getting a job. I'm seeing those benefits already as I'm doing a software engineering internship at Coursera. But when I was six, I wasn't worrying about getting a job. I just did programming because I wanted to have fun, and other people liked the work I was doing. So we've covered tools, which is what we do programming with, and guidance, which is how we do programming. What's left is encouragement, which is why we do programming. I received encouragement from a variety of sources. My parents gave me encouragement by buying me books and helping me set up tools and giving me compliments when I write good code. My friends handle the gaming part. I like playing video games, and so I write video games in my spare time. And my friends who are also gamers will take a look at my video games and give me suggestions on how to make it even more engaging. And this helped a lot. The community played a big factor in how I developed as I learned programming, and I'll talk about that in a bit. And I also received encouragement from myself. It's really amazing to see after you t you've taken an idea and turned it into reality by coding that it's your code, you made that happen. That's really amazing to see. The community played a big factor in how I learned programming. This is a picture from my first presentation I've give, I gave about coding. And here I'm speaking at a local user group about Conway's Game of Life. And to give this presentation, I just went up to the person running the user group and said, hey, I've been doing this thing with Conway's Game of Life in Scala. Can I give you a quick presentation? And they let me give a presentation. The next year, I decided I had done enough things with Scala that I could speak at Scala days. So I submitted an abstract, and just by looking at my YouTube videos and that one user group presentation, they accepted me. And this is my first presentation at a big conference. And then at Scala Days 2013. And this year at Scala Days 2014. And now at OSCA, and this is really amazing. I also received encouragements from other sources. This is from my YouTube videos. I post YouTube videos in which I solve Euler problems and other fun projects. And I get comments where I receive both kudos and ideas on how to become an even better coder. In my seventh grade class, we were learning about the structure of biology, specifically DNA, RNA, etc. And I was showing my dad what I was learning, and he tweeted about this, and he got a reply saying that, check out Rosalind. And Rosalind was really awesome. It's an online platform for learning about bioinformatics, and I really took off in bioinformatics from then. And I even published my first open source library this summer as Janalgo, a bioinformatics library for Scala. This is a place where I was really honored. Professor Martin Ordersky, the creator of Scala, mentioned me in his blog post about the first 10 years of Scala. And he mentioned me for showing how much fun Scala can be. I was really honored to see this. So now I'm going to be going through a few examples of where I received encouragements in my projects. I like playing video games, and Minecraft's one of the video games I like to play, but Minecraft doesn't always offer everything I would like to see. And so I write mods changing the gameplay. In this case, the FIFA World Cup has just ended, and so we're replacing our soccer field with an ice rink. So here I can jump into my park and select a start block, as well as an end block at the other edge of the field. And what this lets me do is I can fill in the area between these blocks with ice, and now I have an ice rink in the middle of my soccer field. I also like creating my own games from scratch. Collidium started out as a simple swing application, and it's really developed since then, turning into the web game it is today. In Collidium, you launch the ball, it bounces around, 
You can even drag in ink to control the path of the ball. And at the end, your goal is to get into the red hole. So we have two platforms covered so far. We have desktop games and web games. What's left is mobile games, and I have that covered. Word Steal is a simple word game for Android in which you receive a pattern like this, and you have to create a word that matches this pattern or let Word Steal give one for you. So here it shows a word you could have used. And this is really great because you can show off your knowledge of words you know as well as learn about new words. So here I know what word I can use. So I can use that, and it's correct. I received a lot of encouragement from my friends. They would give me suggestions like shorten the time limit or have puzzles like this one. And the latest version of WordSteal is available on the Play Store now at tinyurl.com slash WordSteal. I've seen that now that I know programming, I see places where I can use it to make my daily life even better. That's the case with Darif Wimby Kid. So I was reading the online thousand page version of Diary of Wimpy Kid, and I kept on getting bugged by the fact that every time I would load up a new page of that book, I would have to scroll down to view the whole page. And so I created a uh, desktop app in Swing to read this on my, on, as a native app. And so here I'm reading pages, and it even has a few additional features, such as saving the page you're currently at. In my algebra class, we had access to an online textbook, but I didn't like using the web interface. So I wrote up a custom search engine using Chrome to load up the page from the PDF. So I just type in the page number, and it loads up that page. All of this is great, but the best encouragement I got was using programming to help others. And that's what happened with the student store. This year, I was president of our school student council. And as part of that, I brought technology to a variety of places. One of those places was our treasury, specifically to our student store. So we bought a barcode scanner last year, but we're a, private, uh, we're a public school, so we're budget conscious. And so we didn't want to spend too much money buying software for the scanner. And so I wrote up a simple web application for tracking sales in our student store. And we got the opportunity to use this at our last dance this year, where we were scanning in items such as soda, candy, and other items. And it was really great to see by the end of the dance that we had donated over $1,000 to free the children to help end child labor. That was really amazing. Because I got started with programming, I've been able to do a lot of things. I was able to do web apps, desktop apps, mobile apps, bioinformatics, brainwave analysis, video games, robotics, motion tracking, and more. Many of the projects I show today are available on my website at shutage.me. And I hope you can see now that it doesn't matter what age, what time you get started, but before you know it, you'll see the wonders of programming. Thank you. <laughs>